What is up guys and welcome to a new video, a new series that I might do uh, over the next 20 days uh, of the January transfer window. I'm going to be talking about the transfers um, and, and what to expect from them, what I personally think, which deals I think will go through. Uh, just giving you a roundup of the rumours, uh, my thoughts on them, uh, whether I think the transfers, if they go through, will benefit the side. Uh, we'll be talking done deals, rumours, um, bids. Uh, medicals, everything you can think of. I'm probably going to do this uh, series probably every other day um, because I don't know whether there'll be enough new news to do it every day. But if you do like this series, make sure you leave it down in the comments below and you can get involved with this series by putting in the comments section below whether you think these deals will go through and whether you think these are good deals for the football club. We're going to start with what this video is titled. It, it is a surprise. It came out of left field, never expected it. But um, there was reports last night that John Terry... Um, was possibly being linked, well he was, he was being linked with a move on loan to Bournemouth. Bournemouth had made an inquiry about the availability of John Terry, the Chelsea captain, on loan to Bournemouth. Um, obviously, as we know, Bournemouth and Chelsea have been involved in some transfer business this season. Nathan AK going to Bournemouth on loan had a fantastic first half of the season. Chelsea then recalling Nathan AK from that loan deal. So maybe, you know, Chelsea saying, look, you know, we did take Nathan AK back, you're short on defenders. Look, for Bournemouth, if they can get John Terry in, I think it would be a fantastic signing. You know, he is, as we all know, an absolute legend, but he's he's a leader as well. And at a club like Bournemouth, he would, I think, I mean, I think Bournemouth are going to stay up, but I think he'd absolutely keep them up. Um, as for Chelsea, would it be a good move? I mean, we're not short in the defensive options, but I would like to keep Terry, if I'm honest. Um, I don't want to see him leave the club. I would like to see him retire uh, here at Chelsea. Uh, do I think this move is going to happen? No. Um, I think there's a small chance it would happen. I would still be very, very shocked if it did actually happen. So for me, this deal isn't going to happen. Um, but I do think it would be a good deal for Bournemouth if they were to get it get it through. I just personally don't think um, it is going to be any. It, it's it's going to go through. Uh, not this January, anyway. Um, the guy who we always seem to talk about uh, in the transfer windows we have really for the past sort of five transfer windows it feels, and that is Sado Berahino. Now we know his contract. Uh, is expiring, is it, I think it expires at the end of the season, I'm pretty sure it expires at the end of the season, West Brom in the past rejected £20 million bids, £24 million bids from Stoke uh, and Tottenham respectively, so now with half a year left on his contract, there are reports that if he does let, allow himself to see out the contract, if, if West Brom make him see out the contract, uh, then if he moves abroad, in the summer that the fee that West Brom would receive would be something around the, the likes of about £400,000. If he was to go to a Premier League side, it would be in the millions, probably five to six uh, million because they have to pay because he's an under 23 player. But abroad, that rule doesn't apply. So that's an interesting concept. Reportedly, Stoke have bid around £14 million for him. That's what I'm hearing. Um, and I think for Stoke, he would be a good signing. Of course, Fitness-wise is going to be the big question mark. I think you'd have to give him from now to the end of the season to play him sporadically, but to build up his fitness. Um, and I think he'd be a player for next season where he'd come alive and hopefully be the Berahino that you paid for. Uh, if they can get him for full team, I think it's a good price. I think, obviously, English players are inflated price-wise. But Berahino, when, he, when he's playing well, when he's playing regularly, he's a top, top player. Now, the attitude's the big problem. But I really think, personally, there's a clash between Pulis and Berahino that's not going to resolve itself. Now, you can blame Berahino's attitude all you like, but at the end of the day, what might be required is a, a move to a different club and a different manager and a different setup. It's clear Pulis and him aren't ever going to get on and... Yes, maybe you could argue it's bad attitude on, on Berahino's part, and I'm not going to dispute perhaps that that has something to do with it, but at the same time, Pulis hasn't really been giving him uh, many chances at all and hasn't been publicly pra praising him in the press, and as to be honest with you, threw him under the bus uh, a couple of times. So I think it's the right move uh, for all parties. Uh, West Brom will be able to, be able to get multi-million pounds from that deal. Um, you know, what, £14 million pounds for the deal. Uh, Stoke will be able to get a good player, an English player, uh, a striker who... who could work very, very well in their team, especially with the team that they've got now, with the Borjans and the, the Shakiris and the Anatoviches. You know, they're not, they're not a long ball team anymore. I know they've still got Peter Crouch, but they're not that long ball team. I think it would be a good signing for Stoke. Uh, do I think the deal to go across the line? I do. I think Stoke will capture uh, West, uh, will capture Sado Berahino by the end of the transfer window. I do expect it to be for around £16 million. Pounds. Now, the big deal that looks as if it is almost said and done. Morgan Seidlin is currently, as we speak, having a medical at Manchester, at Everton, sorry, 
ahead of his move from Manchester United. That is according to Sky Sources. The deal expected to be as much as £24 million or £22 million. Uh, basically the same um, amount of money that Manchester United bought him for. Now, Snyderlin is a top player. He was fantastic for Southampton. I think he's a top midfielder and I'm surprised Manchester United are going to let him go. But quite clearly, Jose Mourinho... He's never, ever going to play this guy. I think this is a fantastic signing for Everton. I think they're doing some fantastic business. Um, I really, really do. And I think this would be a great move for Schneiderlin, a great move for Everton, and it really could help Everton propel themselves up the thing. It looks like a replacement for Gareth Barry, who's aging. Um, I mean, he may still have a couple more seasons left in him. Who knows? It's Gareth Barry. Uh, he's resolute. It could happen. But I think this is a fantastic move for Morgan Schneiderlin. It will go through, barring absolute disaster in the medical uh, standpoint. Um, and I think it will be a great second season, a second half season for Snyderlin and a very good career move for Snyderlin. Let's talk about him going to West Brom, but I think Everton's the best option. And Garner Gay and Snyderlin, that is something that most clubs are going to fear. Trying to break down them two could be very, very difficult. Staying with Everton, there are talks that they might go in for another United player. That one being uh, Memphis Depay. Now we hear that Everton want a loan deal. United want a permanent deal. I don't expect this deal to go across the line. At least I don't expect him to go to Everton. I can see Memphis Depay going abroad um, by the end of this transfer window. Again, I think if they can bring in Memphis Depay, I think it would be a fantastic signing for them. Obviously, Yannick Balassi, he's been out uh, for, for a lot of uh, this, well, for the rest of the season with that terrible, terrible injury. So they do need somebody. And Memphis Depay, although not set the world alight in the Premier League, a club like Everton could be the perfect uh, place for him uh, to, you know, rejuvenate uh, his career and, and, and do something very, very successfully. Um, and another person I think Everton should look at is Jose Fonte uh, or Jose Font. He looks like he is leaving Southampton, handed in a transfer request. Uh, at the moment, he's favourite to go to Crystal Palace. Now, that would be a superb signing for Crystal Palace. There's talk about him going to Manchester United as well. Don't really see the point of that. But I think Crystal Palace need a centre back. Jose Font, he's, he's an elderly guy. Whoa. I cannot believe. We just had a technical problem. You probably heard it. The microphone decided to go into orbit almost um, and just decided to throw itself onto a glass plate. So that's great. But we're back. And I was talking about Jose Fonts or Jose Fonte. I don't know how the fuck you pronounce his name. But anyway, um, we know he's a good defender. Now we know he's quite old. Uh, that's why for Manchester United, I wouldn't expect him. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. We're calling people old at 30, 33, 32, 34. I don't know how old he is. Um, but Crystal Palace, I think, would be a great signing for, for them. But I also think, and this will really show whether Swansea City want to stay up, Font to Swansea, or Fonte to Swansea, I think would be superb. Swansea are missing a centre-back. They never replaced Ashley Williams. Jose Fonte, he's been in the Premier League. He's proven. He's a good, good centre-back. He's a good leader. I think that would be a great replacement for Ashley Williams. And I think if they were to bring him in, and if as well, we'll talk about Michy Bashwai in a minute, but if they were to bring Michy Bashwai in as well, I think Swansea City would stay up. And at the moment, I think they're the favourites to go down. So I honestly think that that would be a fantastic deal for Swansea City uh, if they were able to bring in Fonts. I don't know if they're even looking at that option, but if you're not Swansea City, you need to. It's as simple as that. But let's stay with Swansea and we'll go to Michy Bashwai. Rumours that he could be moving to Swansea City with Frenette for... Fernando Lorente going to Chelsea. Now, Lorente will move to Chelsea. I'm 100% sure of that. Lorente will be a Chelsea player by the end of January. Um, and Michy Bashwai will have left the club on loan. And I think the question is, will he go to Swansea or will he go to West Ham? I think the better move for him, personally, would be Swansea. But I can see him going to West Ham. Um, so if I had to make a prediction, I think Michy Bashwai goes West Ham. Swansea City lose uh, Lorente to Chelsea. However, the best move, I think, for uh, Swansea would be, of course... Getting Michy Bashwai on loan and sending out Lorente and getting Lorente out. Now, Lorente has been in the past a top, top striker. It doesn't really work for him at Swansea. Um, and I think as a backup striker to Diego Costa uh, at Chelsea, I think it could work. He knows Conte. He's worked with Conte in the past. I think it's a deal that is just simply going to happen. Michy Bashwai needs to either go to West Ham or Swansea. I'm glad they're talking about the Premier League. And he has to have a good second half of the season, get some gold, goals under his belt and come back to Chelsea next season. Sticking with Chelsea. Antonio is linked with a move to Chelsea. Conte seems to like the guy. He's English. We know Conte wants to get a few more English players into the side. Um, 
and there's links that Mikel Antonio could be moving to Chelsea. Now, this is a rumour. No uh, real good source as of yet. No actual facts to this as of yet. Um, but there is talk that Chelsea are wanting Antonio. Um, possibly, perhaps as a left wing back, right wing back. Um, who knows? But we know he's a versatile player. And he's done very, very well for, for West Ham this season. I mean, as a Chelsea fan, I'd like that. Uh, how much he'd cost would be my only... Uh, my only thing that would be like, mm, I don't know about that. Sticking with Chelsea then, uh, quickly, the last little bit of news on Chelsea. Uh, and that is that Ruben Loftus cheek will not be moving to Newcastle on loan this window. Uh, and it looks like he may even stay with, with the club this window. Uh, so at the start, it looked like he was going to get a loan deal. I think it's probably best for him if he does get a loan deal. But he impressed in the FA Cup um, and maybe impressed enough for him to stay. Uh, at Chelsea. Everton striker, I can't say his name, Nicey uh, has agreed, uh, that's not how you say his name, has agreed um, a deal with Hull uh, to move there. I think that would be a good thing. I th you know, Everton bought him for a ridiculous price. I think the record transfer fee, um, no, I know actually it wasn't a record transfer fee. I'm a fucking moron for saying that. They bought fucking Lukaku. Um, but it was a lot of money and he didn't really play at all. Um, so it'd be interesting to see whether he can do anything at Hull. Uh, there's a, a, a report that the deal could be made permanent in the summer. Um, with a £10 million. Pounds. Um, the other things I want to just quickly go through done deals, really. I think that's that's the next big thing to do. I think we spoke about pretty much everything that's in uh, the news at the moment. Apart from the one thing, West Ham look like they want to get Robert Snodgrass. They offered £3 million, um, which Hull saw as an insult. And then they offered £5 million. Um, I would expect that to be rejected. I think for Robert Snodgrass... You, I think Hull have got to keep him. I don't think any money should... He shouldn't go under any circumstances. Um, I think if he goes, Hull go down. It's as simple as that. So will they keep hold of him? I think they probably will. I think Snodgrass will stay at Hull to the end of the season. Although not a bad uh, signing uh, if West Ham can pull that off. Because he's been a, a star player this season in the Premier League for a struggling side. Um, one last bit of news regarding... Uh, not Hull City. Uh, I'm trying to think who I was about to talk about. That was it. Stuart Downing. Hasn't really played a lot for Middlesbrough this season. He's come on and off uh, as a sub, really. Um, and he's expected to move to Crystal Palace. I expect that deal to go through over the next, actually, probably by the end of the week. Uh, let's quickly go through the done deals, then, and we'll round the video off. Um, the big done deals to talk about, of course, are the big one, I suppose, so far, is the fact that, uh, well, I suppose Joey Barton coming to Burnley. That's an interesting... Uh, move uh, that on a free, so he's back to Burnley. Whether he'll feature at all, we'll have to wait and see whether uh, any sort of um, ban from that betting could uh, affect that. Oscar moving to China, sixty million pounds from Chelsea. That's probably a big one for them at the moment, as well as John Obi McKell leaving the football club. Uh, Lukeman from Charlton, uh, Everton signed him for seven point five million pounds. He's a big, big uh, prospect. Uh, will he? Uh, fail like so many prospects english prospects do we'll have to wait and see uh wilfred in i think that's how you say it, or Ndide, uh is has basically completed the move to uh leicester for 15 million pounds from genk subject to completion or subject to clearance i would have thought so that that deal will go across the line um and other than that other than the fact that lee grant was made his move permanent to stoke city for 1.5 billion that's a very good move. he's been fantastic um, there hasn't as of yet been much movement in or out, but expect the Schneiderlin deal and the Lorente deal to start kind of a ripple effect. And what I mean, and that's what always happens in this transfer. You, know, you need a big deal to go through before other deals start to, to creep through. So I expect Schneiderlin to go through and then I expect the Lorente deal to go through. And then that goes through. That will mean that Mishi Bashwai makes his destination. Now, if he goes to Swansea, that will mean that uh, West Ham probably do actually go and get uh, Robert Snodgrass, which could then mean that, that Antonio then becomes available. Um, the Lorente deal, funnily enough, could actually make... Uh, well, sorry, Mishi Bashwai moving to Swansea from the Lorente deal could then mean that Crystal Palace are going into the, the transfer... Uh, market and looking at a Jose font and looking at a Stuart Downing. So expect the ripple effect. It usually takes one big uh, transfer to basically get everybody moving and get everybody um, going. If we just look at the BBC gossip page as to what they're talking about today before we end the video, um, they're obviously talking about the big one. John Terry to, to possibly move to um, Bournemouth. They're also talking about Christian Bierteke, Allardyce 
maybe going to let the guy go, although today reports that's not going to happen. I don't expect that to happen. Mesut Ozil and Alexis Sanchez both uh, will not sign. No oh my goodness. Arsenal are becoming increasingly concerned. Midfielder Mesut Ozil and Alexis Sanchez will both not sign new deals and will leave in the summer. Now, I expect one of them to... Um, Sign, and I think that one will be Mesut Ozil, but I expect Alexis Sanchez to move abroad, possibly to PSG. Uh, as for Ma Mamadou Sakho, I haven't really spoke about him, but I expect him to move to Southampton, probably as a replacement for Virgil van Dijk. Um, and that's pretty much all, apart from, yeah, that's a big one about West Ham, is that Scott Hogan. Again, if that deal goes through, then expect Michy Bashwai to go to Swansea. Uh, they're talking about 12.5 million. Uh, that's been rejected from, uh, from Brentford. But uh, 15 million is what they want. Will uh, West Ham pay for it? It's a punt. He's from the Premier League. Uh, he's from the Championship, of course. Is he going to be able to cut it in the Premier League? You know, it's always a question mark. He's a young guy, only 24. Um, I think it would be a good sign. It's a very expensive signing. It's a gamble, but West Ham have done well from signing people from lower divisions before. They did it with Mikel Antonio. Maybe this will be another one that works. But that is going to bring today's video to uh, an end. Uh, and I'll end it on the fact that Memphis Depay is in talks with Leon to move over there on a permanent thing. Although it is not necessarily going to go through. I'll be back in the next couple of days for more news when I'm sure the Snyderland deal will cross the line. And then maybe that ripple effect that I'm talking about may well have happened. Leave your thoughts on the transfers down in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Make sure you check out my Chelsea career. It's been doing terrible on views. It's, it's very entertaining, folks. I think this season's been the most entertaining of career mode that I've ever uploaded onto the channel. If you've missed it, go check out all the episodes. I personally think they're entertaining. There's great goals. There's fantastic moments. There's... You know, the, the Premier League season's incredible. Uh, we have a couple of good crap, cup runs. Shocks. Extraordinary results. It really is quite an entertaining series, if I do say so myself. So go check that out. If you're into WWE, go check out my videos on there. Mr. WWE Cam. Link will be in the description. Um, and if you miss my PewDiePie drama video, my Anision drama video, or my Nick28 T drama video, go check them out and dislike the video because you hate drama. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. I don't know what the hell I'm going to put in the background for this. Um... So, yeah, that could be interesting. I don't know what the hell to put in the background um, while I'm talking about this stuff. So I'll probably just put a load of pictures of a load of players that I randomly talk about. I'm not going to all time it because, I mean, that would just take like five hours. And I'm sorry, but it's out of the time. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. That's your transfer Cameron sent a roundup. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Said that ten times. Oh, I wish it could be summer. It's too cold outside.